All right, what's up everyone? This is Don with Third Creative and this is the walkthrough tutorial video for MatchUp. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all of the layers, the processes, the steps to uh, customize this design and hopefully get the most out of it. It will be uh, extremely thorough. I try to cover anything and everything that anyone might ask or need to know. Uh, so no matter what your experience or skill level is in Photoshop, hopefully I'll cover it all. Uh, I like to start off with a 2x3 vertical file. Just keep in mind that the steps and processes that I cover uh, are pretty consistent across the board. So they should apply for the most part to the horizontals, the uh, button file, the memory mate. Uh, towards the end, I'll pull up uh, the horizontal file, the memory mate, and the button and cover a, a few unique things. But again, uh, otherwise everything I cover here with this first vertical file is pretty consistent. Um, so I always like to start at the bottom. Let's take a look at the very bottom folder. Um, it is entitled Background Layers. Um, so when we open it up here, uh, we've got a few things. The very bottom we've got background color. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. If you want to change the background color, which is actually going to be on the right side and the left side here, you just double click in this little uh, box. It'll pull up your color picker and uh, you can roll with any color that you like. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, next I have two folders. I have left stripes and right stripes. So you can turn them off and see that respectively they're left and right. Um, above that is a folder that I have them in and this folder has a mask on it but it also has some layer styles. You can click stroke to add a stroke outline. If you want to change the stroke color, double click on the word stroke, pick your color box, and you can go with any, any color you like. You can also use the size to increase or decrease the size. Um, we have color overlay. So if you want all of the stripes to all be the same color, like in this sample image, the easiest way is to use this color overlay. And so you can go through and click on this box, pick any color you like. If for some reason you want to uh, have different colors, some of my sample images you'll see like the middle stripe is uh, a different color than the top and the bottom. You would want to turn this color overlay off and you would actually go in to each of these folders. Each of these layers is a stripe. And I have them labeled top stripe, middle stripe, bottom stripe. And so you can pick the color that you want, uh, you know, for your top and bottom. It may help to copy this code and then you can just paste it into the rest. But it would give you the option to make some of them different, like this. Uh, let's see. Close that up. The next layer we have is paper texture overlay. Um, this, if we zoom in, you can probably see a little better that we have this paper texture. It is set to multiply as the blend mode. You can turn it off, uh, but it just gives a little little texture there, a little added touch. Let's see. Let's go to get on screen. All right. So uh, let's talk about this layer mask here. If uh, I hold down shift and click on it, it turns the layer mask off. Uh, you don't see any change. If we come up to the center column, the next folder, and turn that off, you can see that this is a look all in itself that you can go with by turning the center column options folder off. And this is where this layer mask comes into play. So you can see if I turn the layer mask off, they run all the way and if I even come up here to the subject and to this and turn off you can see we've got some weird stuff here so that is why I have it's basically overlapping of the shapes but that is why I have this layer mask you can actually adjust this layer mask make sure that there's not a chain link here so there shouldn't be by default but if you see one just click there turn it off and with your move tool um, you can bring this in bring it out, make it match on the other side. You've got some options there. So if you want to come further behind your subject, you can do that. Um, but otherwise, um, if you leave the center column 
uh, folder on, you're not going to see any of that. But wanted to explain it nonetheless because it is an option. You'll see in the sample images that you can turn different layers on, turn them off. There's a bunch of combinations that you can work with to get different looks. Let's keep it moving and uh, take a look at this next folder, which is center column options. Let's open that up. And let's see, let's go to the bottom. This is a shape layer. And this is basically the shape of this center column. And we have uh, some layers that are clipped to this bottom layer. And uh, in the outside, you can see an inner shadow. You see the stroke outline, and there's even a drop shadow. So you'll, you'll notice the stroke outline is attached here, inner shadow and drop shadow. You can turn them off, and that is its own look. You can um, adjust the shadows by clicking on any of these. You can come in and adjust the size and the, the distance, the opacity. Um, all sorts of things. You can come in to the stroke and you can change the color um, with this little box here. You can change the size. You can set the outside. You can set it to inside or center. Um, lots of options there to uh, adjust and customize the look. Um, it just depends on what you want and what you like. Um, so next we have some some layers that are clipped all of these so let's come all the way up here and you'll see that there is uh, an exposure vignette so if I turn it off it just kind of brightens it up and if I turn it on it just kind of darkens around the edges and kind of draws you into your subject um, this is an optional layer you can turn it off or you can even come in and move this slider slightly to adjust it or you can go the opposite direction uh, if you want to. Uh, let's back out of that. And so that's what that layer is. This layer here is a color grade option. Uh, you may or may not want to use this, but if I turn it off, you can see it changes the color of the sky slightly. So it just kind of adds a little bit of a orange tint to it. It is set to soft light. And I have that same color grade option clip to this folder up here, which is where you would place your subject images if you turn it on. So it's just a way to get it to match. So you can see if I turn off the color grade option on the subject image, turn it on, it just adds a little, little bit of orange tint to it, nice extra touch. And so I wanted the same thing to apply to the sky um, so that it would match. Um, you can adjust the color, you can adjust the opacity, you can turn them off, leave them on, totally up to you. That is a color grade option for the sky to match the color grade option if you use it that you would apply to your subject images. Um, next we have two layers that are turned off. This is the alternate background option. So let me go ahead and turn everything off here. You actually have the option to not have anything turned on here and just have this solid but this is a paper texture and if you turn it on without this uh, this hue saturation layer it's just going to be gray and you can see it gives you a little bit of texture here so if you want to adjust the color here which you likely would you'll turn on change paper texture color layer and again we'll have the sky and this color grade layer turned off. By default it is orange just to match the subject image that we have currently, but just double click in this box. Um, the HSL panel sometimes is overwhelming to uh, some people, but once you get the hang of it, it's really no big deal at all. So basically you would want to identify, I guess, the hue uh, or the color that you want. So if you're looking for like a navy, you can come in somewhere in here. Now you have to use these other two sliders to get what you want. So if I was going for like a dark navy blue, I would bring the saturation down. I can see it's a little too purple, so you can always come back and adjust the color slider, the hue slider. And then you would uh, play with the, the darkness, so I can come down. And it's just a matter of fine tuning. You find the right balance of the color that you're looking for. So just keep adjusting these sliders, the saturation, the lightness, the darkness, uh, the hue, until you get it just right. 
And then if you want to apply this to, say, the horizontal file, you can look at all of your values here and just apply them the same on any other files that you're going to use. So let's go back. All right. And then paper texture. Um, we've already explained that. So let's turn the sky back on. Um, just above the exposure vignette, we have a folder here, which is the lights option. You can turn them on. You can turn them off. They're in their own separate folders. They have not much really you want to mess with in there. You can move each one around if you want to. You can play with this layer mask and how it fades out towards the bottom. But um, I like the look for the vertical without the lights personally. But um, if you want the lights, I made sure to include them as an option. So that's pretty much it for the center column options folder. Let's keep going. We've got upper shape layers. Now you'll notice that this is turned off. So I mentioned that you can get all sorts of different looks. So let's turn this on and take a look at it. And so now we've got something that kind of matches these bottom corners. Let me turn this back on too so it looks right. So this is um, just another look and you can open it up and we can take a look at uh, what we have here. This very first one, I have the fill down to zero, so you don't see the color of the shape. The only thing you see is the stroke outline that I've attached and the drop shadow. And so if we zoom in, you can see what that is controlling. If I turn that layer off, you lose that completely. So you can click on stroke here and you can change the color to anything you want. You can increase the size if you want it bigger or, or decrease if you want it smaller. You can also double click on drop shadow and adjust that if it's too dark or too big or too small. Uh, more than likely you just leave it like it is, but it is adjustable if you want to. Um, the next is a paper texture overlay. So you can see it. It's a little subtle because I've used such a dark color for this but the paper texture is there it's optional you can turn it off you can turn it on you can decrease the opacity if you want to the next layer is where we're going to control the overall color of this background shape so it's very simple double click in this box and you can make it anything you want um, pretty straightforward next we have um, the upper shapes and so I've got a few uh, different um, shape layers here. So this one is what the color is applied to and it, it's going to uh, apply to this entire area that you see that is this dark gray. Um, so you would change the color here but these bottom two um, these lines are not stroke outlines they are just additional uh, copies of the same shape. And so if I turn this one off, you'll see it. it's the orange. And so you just double click on color overlay and you can pick any color you want for this outline. Same thing applies to um, this bottom shape here. So if I turn that off, you'll see it's the white and that you, uh, and that you can change it the same way. So if you want to make them bigger or smaller, you can. I would just select the layer that you want to change, use your move tool, and you can use your arrow key up and down. So I'm arrow keying down, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, and the same thing with the orange one. You can make it smaller or bigger. You have options there. So let's go back the way it was. Uh, let's see. I think we covered the drop shadow and the stroke outline. Okay, we have a, a drop shadow on the uh, entire folder, and that's where you get this drop shadow here, which, again, you just double click on it, and you can adjust any of these parameters if you need to, or you can turn it off. Um, options. So let's see what we have next. Next, we have our upper text layer. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and center this up see what we're working with. There's a little bit to unpack here and explain. So let's start off with, I guess we'll start off at the top. We have a folder entitled Stripes. 
within that folder we have subfolders that we can open up. Each one of these layers in here represents one of the stripes. Now, if you want all the stripes to be the same color, you can come up here to the primary stripes folder and you can turn on color overlay. And that will allow you to just pick the color once and it just applies to all of the stripes that are in these subfolders. If you do want them to be different, just like down here on the side, you can turn this off and go into the subfolders and change the color of any of them. It's very simple. Click on color overlay, click the box, pick any color that you want. Um, let's move on here. We have our upper text, very simple, straightforward. Um, the color is controlled either in your character panel or by double clicking here to highlight, you'll get this box up here. You can change the color to anything you want. Um, I always say this in all my videos, but this character panel is your friend. If you don't have it in your, uh, in your setup here, uh, I would add it, definitely. Um, I have the kerneling set to, what is that, 1200? Um, that's the spacing between the letters. So depending on what you want, you can control the size and the spacing. You can increase it, you can decrease it. Um, again, I cover this in just about every video that I make for every template, but I think it's important. So keep that in mind. It'll help, you know, if you just change this to one year, 2023, you know, that looks okay but you may want to increase the kerneling, you know, to get it to take up some more space, make sure that it stays centered, um, but you get the idea. So next we have um, team name. It's basically the same thing. You can control the color. It's just a solid color. Um, it has a bevel and emboss. So if you zoom in, you can kind of see down here on the bottom. That is optional. You can turn it on, you can turn it off depending on the look that you want. Um, I did add a gradient overlay option in case you want to do that. Um, if you turn it on, it's set to something that's very subtle. You can barely tell, but you can pick any gradient you want. You can click on these boxes here and, and customize it. Uh, I won't get into too much detail on how to use the gradients. Um, there's plenty out there on YouTube if you need to uh, brush up on gradients, but the gradient option is there if you want it and it's both on the team name and the sport name. Now, something else we need to cover is, you see how these stripes just kind of fill in the space, and it works with Bulldog and Soccer, but you may need to change this and it may not fit just perfectly. So let's run through that real quick. Let's say that we're, Another team that I photograph a lot is the Coyotes. So let's um, let's learn how to spell and put in Coyote. And let's put in, let's say, football. So now we've changed it, and it's just not, it's not working. So we've got to make some adjustments. Um, so the first thing I would do, um, if we're using this background, I just want to scale this down. Now what I do is with the move tool, I just click on an anchor point, I hold down shift, click on this bottom anchor point and drag upward. And I can see my, my box here. I just try to get it close so you have some, some balance and symmetry. We won't change colors, but now the next thing that we have is a big gap with um, the bars and, and coyote. So again, we want to make sure everything is centered. So let's come back up to the stripes. Here's how I suggest you do it. Rather than trying to modify both of them and get them perfectly, which you can try. Um, if you just click on this right anchor point, you can bring it close and hit OK. Go to the next one, bring it close, hit OK. Um, that actually might work just fine but it may not be exactly the same. So if you're particular and you want them exactly the same, what I suggest you do is just delete one of them. And once you've customized your colors and you change it, just duplicate. 
and I didn't really explain how to do that. You can right click to duplicate or what I like to do and I'm on a Mac so I hold down option and I click this layer folder and I drag down so you can see that blue line right underneath there and it's going to duplicate it. Now I will click on one of these anchor points I'll hold down shift which will keep it at the same same height and just drag it over. Now Another option to get them centered is to come up here and select the stripes folder. Now I have an action that's built into my Wacom tablet that allows me to center it, but if you don't have that, just hit select all, and as long as you have your move tool, you'll see these little icons up here. This is to center horizontally, this is to center vertically. So if I click on center horizontally, it barely moved it, but it made sure that it was centered. I guess what I didn't actually do before I demonstrated that. Well, let me deselect. What I didn't do is actually change the size. So let's let's go ahead and just drag this closer about what I think I would want. And now I'll duplicate it. And now I'll bring it over. And the last step is to select the primary folder, select all and hit horizontal centers. Now we want to make sure we deselect to get rid of the marching ants. But anyways, I just wanted to explain how you would adjust the stripes so that it that it fits. Now that we've done that, I can take the entire select the entire folder. I can click on this anchor point here holding down shift and I can just make it as big as I want. I can move it up, move it down. The main thing is to just fit the space you know the the best possible and then I can center it all so now I'll collapse that come back I'm going to turn this off you can see you can make sure that you fill this space but if you don't want it to exceed the boundaries of that center column you can get in there just right all right hope all that makes sense let's keep it going next we have subject images pretty uh, self-explanatory uh, let's make this fit properly again all right, so let's look at this. We uh, open this folder, drop your subject images in here, you scale them, you center them. Um, we have a layer mask here at the bottom, but really uh, the main thing is this drop shadow. You can turn this drop shadow on, but it doesn't look right if you have a sky background. So you're really only gonna use the back or the drop shadow if in the center column you're not using the sky but you're using the solid background um, but it's there and it can be adjusted if you uh, feel the need to to make any changes to it so let's go back and look at the next so I already explained this uh, a little bit but we have our color grade option I've got it set to orange I've got it set to soft light oh what is that like 15 percent you can increase it Obviously, you can get carried away with it. You can decrease it. You can, if you want to go with a cool color, you could do that. Um, just a real easy way to add a little bit of color grading. Um, but again, you can turn it off. It is completely optional. So the next layer we have is this color overlay. It has um, a layer mask on it. And basically what this layer mask does, the color is uh, for the lower body. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's turn it off. You can see what it looks like. So if you want to kind of have a, a gradual fade into a color that matches your background, then you would um, change the color here. So you can make it anything you want. So if you have a red background and you want a red fade, then you would just make it match or get it to where it looks right to you. Um, but this uh, mass out the left and right side and you can see the constraint lines and it's basically so that it doesn't bleed over so for example if I do a, a color that you can clearly see if I turn this off I'll hold down shift and just click on it then it goes all the way across so if you decide that you don't want to use this column here then you may want it to go all the way across otherwise you'll just see a drastic cutoff right there so that is an option um, is to turn that off and it's also an option to to move these around to adjust it if you want to let's get this back to white 
And then let's turn this back on. Nope, not that one. This one. Okay. And so I put this color overlay inside a folder. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to apply two different layer masks to this. So I'm able to apply this layer mask directly to the, the color overlay layer. That's what keeps it constrained to just the center and not apply to the sides. But by putting it in this folder and adding a layer mask to the folder, it's what allows me to use the gradient tool with black to white to create this fade. If I hold down shift and click on this, then the color just applies to everything. And obviously that doesn't work. Another thing that I've explained in many of my tutorial videos is how to adjust this gradient mask. So let's turn off the text layers above it. Let's say you want this to be a, a quicker transition or a longer transition. It's very simple. Make sure you have your gradient mask selected. Make sure you are on your gradient tool. Make sure that you are working with black to white or white to black. Uh, black conceals, white reveals. So you just have to remember that. Um, now with the gradient tool, basically you can just you can just keep doing it over and over until it looks right. I like to hold down shift because it allows me to keep, well once I start it, I'll hold down shift, it'll snap into place. Now you can see I've got it backwards. So I just need to let go and start over. Click, hold down shift, drag down. Now once you have it in here, you don't have to keep starting over if you don't want to. The new gradient tool is pretty cool. It, allow, it gives you these control points. So I can hold down shift and drag it up. And this center point, I can adjust it up and down. I can move this up and down. And again, I like to hold shift because it keeps it straight up and down like a 90 degree angle uh, rather than getting a little out of whack. So snap to place by holding shift just like that. And that's all there is to it. So if you ever need to adjust that, that's how you do it. Hope that makes sense. Let's turn our text layers back on. All right, so the next folder we have is lower corner shape layers. Let's open that up. So you'll remember we covered the upper shape layers. Um, it's basically the same thing or the same kind of setup. We have this top one and it controls this drop shadow that you can see here in this stroke outline. So you double click stroke to change the size or the color and you can double click drop shadow to change the opacity, the distance, the size if you want or you can turn them off completely optional but that's the only thing that this layer controls the fill is down to zero so it's not giving you any fill color or anything like that um, next we have our paper texture and that's just to keep things consistent there's a paper texture at the top on the background and on these corners um, this is where you will change the, the color of both of the corners. So you can come in and pick any color that you need. Um, and as we already explained, it's the same setup. Um, this is the primary shape layer. And then these bottom two, excuse me, um, are the what look like stroke outlines. They're just not set up as stroke outlines. So you can turn it off if you only want one, one stroke or one stripe bordering it you can turn one off and leave the other on um, you can move them up and down to control the size and again they have color overlays to change the color and uh, we have the drop shadow option as well so I won't want to get into too much detail since we pretty much explained everything that applies when we went over this upper shape uh, folder so let's look at the lower text this is very simple and straightforward we've got our first name um, I have it turned off, but there is a bevel option that would make it match kind of what we have up here. There is a stroke outline option if you need it to stand out a little bit more, if it's kind of blending in with your background. Um, there is a gradient overlay option, so if you want it to be a gradient rather than a solid color, you can turn that on. Of course, double click on any of them that you want to control, and you can get to the layer style uh, parameters here and, and make adjustments as you need them. And then I have drop shadow turned on. I found that when I was creating my sample images, uh, it looked a lot better without the drop shadow on, on many of them. And I think the reason that it looks good with drop shadow here is just because I went with white 
and I wanted to create some separation. So you can see if I turn that off, it just kind of, it, it doesn't stand out enough. It kind of gets lost. So I put the drop shadow in there as a good option in case you need to create that separation. But I think you will find that a lot of them look even better without it. Uh, once you get in there and start customizing it. Exact same thing applies to uh, the last name. I went ahead and set up, I like to do this, I set up four subtext for classifications. And that way you can just, you know, turn them on. But if you're using automation, you won't need all of this. It can say anything you want. You can change it to the year, it could be their position, it could be literally anything. But um, the, con the color on all of these is controlled again in your character panel. Just select the text layer that you want to change the color to, or if you double click in the T box, it will highlight the entire text layer and you will see this color change option up here. They're all set uh, to centered and so when you type anything over it, it should stay centered um, for the most part. And I think that's pretty much it for the lower text layers. Pretty simple and self-explanatory. The last thing that we have is a levels vignette. Um, and so if I turn this off, you can see it kind of just flattens out. This is really just there to create some depth and draw you into your subject. And if you want to, you can open it up and you can start playing with these, uh, these points here, you know, to make, to increase or decrease, you know, the look or the amount of vignette that you have. So one more thing that I'm thinking of while we're talking about these vignettes let's look at this uh let's see what do i need to look at let's turn let's turn this off or actually no let's yeah let's turn it off and then let's open the center column i have this exposure vignette so if we select it and we use our move tool we select the mask we can see it's clipped to the center but it comes all the way to the top i guess first things first i think this example would apply more if we use the solid color. So now if we don't use this upper shape, this levels vignette applies to the entire center, center column. If we are using the upper shape, then you don't really see it. And it looks okay, it looks good, but one option you have that I wanna cover is to come down here and make sure you have your um, exposure vignette layer mask selected and with your move tool and you see this anchor you can click here and you can just drag this down and what that's going to do is bring the edge of that vignette further down and create more of a, a prominent spotlight effect you can find the sweet spot um, you may not want to go into that much detail but I wanted to point that out that that is an option because in uh, many of my sample images that I made I decided to do that just depends on if you're going to use this upper shape or not. Um, but that is all of the layers and hopefully we've covered everything there. There's just a few things that um, I want to go over with the horizontal and quick explanation of the button file and the uh, memory mate file. So let's jump over to the horizontal file real quick. All right, so now we have the one by two file pulled up here and uh, most of the, the steps and the processes that I explained for that vertical file, it's all gonna apply here, but there's a few uh, few unique things that I want to, to cover. You'll notice that by default, it's set up with grass, lights, the sky, and it's just set up in a way where it works for head to toe. So you're showing the feet, you're uh, including the shadows, which I hand paint my shadows in. I really need to work on figuring out a simple way um, to create a tutorial video. Um, there's several out there on YouTube. Josh Hanna has a really good one um, that I highly recommend. Um, but I understand not everyone um, either knows how or is com confident in ground shadows or maybe, you know, it's just time. Time is money and you want to keep it moving. So uh, let's jump over. I've got the website pulled up with some some options here. Um, 
I just want to explain some of the different options that you have when you're building your team. So you'll see this bottom row here. I did three quarter or knee up. You can do that. And then the top option or the top row here, you can see different ways that I set up head to toe with ground shadows. So not to talk about two things at the same time, but while we have this up, you'll notice I, what I was trying to do here is just demonstrate um, all the different combinations and, and things that you can turn on, turn off to get different looks. So this very first one, I turn the center column off and I've got just the stripes behind it with the paper texture and the ground shadows looks cool. But with this one, it's basically the same thing, but with the center column turned on. And then you can see the vignette around here and I decided to turn off these lower corners over here we've got the lower corners turned back on but we also turn on the upper shape we moved the uh, the text layers down and put varsity up here all sorts of options same thing down here it has the upper shape and the lower corners turned on with the center column but we've got three quarters or knee up and then of course you can use the sky just so many options here so let's jump into the file itself and just kind of explain how some of this will work so um, right here we've got our center column options let's open it up um, just like in the vertical we've got a color grade option for the background that's just to make it match the subject it's very subtle you can turn it on you can turn it off you can change the color you can change the opacity you've got options there with the horizontal I actually split the background options into two different folders so this first folder it has our layer mask here which is if we select that actually turn that chain off select that you can see that it makes sure that anything that's in this folder doesn't um, exceed these boundaries here and start to run off into the sides So that's what that's for it's got the stroke it's got the drop shadow that's all the same uh, if we open it up, we've got our atmospheric haze. You can turn that on, turn that off. You can adjust it. You can move it if you want to, but more than likely you're not going to want to do that. We've got our light option. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. You can open it up. You can scale them up, scale them down, move them left, move them right. That's all the same. Um, we have a white line. This is what uh, you see down here. You can turn that off. You can turn it on. You can move it around. All the same. We've got our grass. Um, and we've got our sky. Now, if you want to do the sky, you can just turn, excuse me, if you want to do the sky, but you don't want to do head to toe, you can just turn that grass layer off. And then when you're putting your subjects in here, you would do three quarter. And we'll kind of touch on that as well. So that is an option. Um, and then if we come down, let's see, collapse this, turn this off up here we've got the same thing we've got our vignette we've got our change color we've got our paper we've got our center column um, we've got all of that that's the same if you want to do three quarters rather than head to toe let's come up here to our team images with our team images um, what you would do is you would turn on this lower color fade and so what that's going to do is it's going to give you a solid color that gradually fades into op opaque up here. When you're dropping your subject images in, you would add a layer mask to each of your subject images or put them in a folder and add a layer mask where you can, you can either use your gradient tool or you can use a brush and you can, you can fade out their lower portion of their body but depending on how you set it up you can see here this this lower color fade is going to kind of go up over their lower body and then your back row when you put them in there you can add layer masks to those uh, those layers as well so that you know if you see anything through these cracks which I can like in here if you see anything you can kind of mask that out um, there's lots of ways to do that, but that's what this uh, this is for right here is to create a color fade and That's to cover the lower portion of their bodies if you're not doing head to toe 
there might be some cool creative way that you can turn this on and apply it to head to toe if you want like a lower haziness um, you do have the option to reduce opacity or just change the the gradient move it up move it down play around with it to get different looks but that is how you would do um, full body which I didn't actually demonstrate it so hopefully me just kind of describing or explaining it makes sense along with being able to to see an example of it here um, but you can you can do all sorts of things with the, the text you can move it around um, like I said turn different layers on different layers off we've got our lower corner here you can turn that off you can turn off center column and you can start to see all the different looks and let's see this is a good example here if you turn your center column off then you're probably going to want to hold down shift on this team image folder and click so that anything that gets cut off from this mask no longer gets cut off um, but anyways hopefully that explains everything with these horizontal files only a few things left to cover real quick is the memory mate and the button so let's jump over to the memory mate okay so we have uh, our memory mate pulled up everything is pretty much all the same it's just if you're new to this you may not understand how to create the memory mate uh, basically you want to start with your 4x5 horizontal file and you want to create your team image when you create your team image using the 4x5 file you'll save it as a JPEG so if you'll notice this team image that's in here basically all that is is a JPEG that was saved with the 4x5 horizontal file of the team image once you have that team image created you have the JPEG saved there is a folder here that says insert team image if you open it up you'll see I've got sample team image in here so really all you would need to do you would probably want to delete what I have in here obviously and let's I didn't have it queued up but let's let's see that's okay we can find it I've got sample images here where is it alright there it is so you find your save team image and you just drag and you drop now it always does this because I had this layer folder selected it placed it directly above it we want it inside so once it's in there just drag it and drop it inside this folder that says insert team images it should automatically make it a smart object which is good because you'll be scaling it up and scaling it down and you don't want the resolution to degrade so once you have it in there go to your move tool and you'll see these constrain anchor points um, depending on how your Photoshop is set up you may or may not have to hold down shift I have to hold down shift to maintain uh, the ratio but you can just kind of click on the corners and you can drag you can move it around basically make it the size that you want and position it the way that you want it and once you have that it's in there and you're good to go there is an option to add a stroke outline to your uh, team image that you put in there that you can change you can actually add two stroke outlines I have them in there and then you have the drop shadow which you can turn on or turn off or double click to adjust um, but that's how you get your team image in there now we have our subject images that's pretty self-explanatory you drop your subject images in here if for some reason you have your subjects facing camera left rather than camera right um, so for example let's just flip him uh, horizontally let's say it looks like this so you may not want it to look like that where his back is to the team all you have to do is move them over and now you would want to select your insert team images folder hold down control or command and click on these lower text layers and basically that highlights the contents of both folders now you can click an anchor point I hold down shift to keep it at the same height and you can just drag it over and now you're set up you know for camera left rather than camera right 
You can take it a step further. Once you have it set up like this, you can save it as its own Photoshop file for left oriented uh, or right oriented memory mate. You can make one for left so they're both set up for separate, however you want to do that. But you have the option to set them up either left or right. And that's how you would go about it. So let's go back to its original state. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, so we don't need to get into all of those details. That is the memory mate. Last thing is the button. This is going to be a long video, but we're about to wrap it up. So let's take a look at that button. All right, so the button's pretty simple. Um, if you used any of my previous templates, you're probably already familiar with all of this. But it is set. It is a one by one file, but it is arranged and set up in a way that would work for a button. So the very top layer folder has bleed guides. This is to help you make sure that everything stays in the safe zone. Before you save any of your images, you obviously want to turn this folder off. So your image will be a square image, but you will know that everything that's important is in the safe zone. So you turn it off and you save your images. Um, it does not create a round image. Um, once you put it into your lab software or website, you should be able to control everything, scale it up, scale it down, move it around, make sure that nothing is lost. But the cool thing about this is that you can also use it to create a one by one square image. You know, Instagram used to be one by one, but you know, you can do others now. But if you want a one by one or say a game day image, everything else that I explain applies to this, but you can find this upper text which I didn't mean to crunch it like that and you can move it up and then now you have one by one you can scale up or scale down you can find these lower corners let's see click on them you can move them down you can you can move things around so that you're just working with a, a one by one image if you want one uh, but otherwise you've got this file here for buttons if nothing else um, so I said that we were gonna wrap this up after the button but I realized there is one thing that I did not explain and I want to do that real quick um, this graphic right here it just kinda demonstrates in most of my templates you can do this but if there's a center circle or a center column um, you can drop your own image in here this is a stock image of a golf course that I found it is not included in the in the template but if you want to um, add a background say for swimming or for golf or some sport that's you know uh, n not soccer or a grass field with a sky you can do that you can drop it in scale it put it in here um, it could be your team's own court or field or school anything at all you have that option um, and real quick just to kind of explain how you would do that it would be in the center column folder here and we have our center column um, let me see if I can find that I should have been better prepared but if I type in golf yeah there it is so we found our golf let's just drop it in all right so now it's it's in this folder but it's not clipped to the center column it needs to be clipped to the center column so I hold down option on a Mac but you can also right click and hit create clipping mask and it will clip it to the layer that's below it now the problem that we have now is that I have this paper texture turn on and I have this um, change color that I'm actually glad that change color is on there let's leave it on because that's a cool uh, effect as well which is an option so now what we need to do is scale this image up so I'm going to click on the constraint point. I have to hold down shift to maintain the proportions, but you can scale it and move it. I'm going to go ahead and do the full coverage here. Now you can move it left, move it right. You see the golf hole there. Now if you leave this HSL on, you can colorize it. Very cool. but you can also turn it off. Also, if you uh, turn off this upper shape, you can see that I, 
I made it cover the entire area. Now, just one step further since we're on the subject, this doesn't look right down here. This is a good example of how you can make it make it match. So I can come in here and just pick you know some sort of color out of here with the color picker. You might want dark, you might want brownish, somewhere in there. You can find something that works for that color fade. Um, or you can actually turn it off if you want. It just depends on what, what you're looking for. So anyways, I wanted to demonstrate that. So now I'm finally done. Uh, it was very thorough, very long, probably one of my longest videos yet. But I'm sure there, there possibly could be something that I didn't cover. So as always, feel free to contact me, don at thirdcreative.com. Um, or you can go to the website and there's a, there's a contact option there. But that is all I have for this one. It's time to move on to the next one. But as always, I hope this serves you well, and I hope it makes you some cash. So until next time, see ya.